Good morning, Chapel Hill. As you find your seats, the band is going to go ahead and start playing Desert Song.
joy. There is joy. When you seek and find God's faithfulness, there, there is, is joy. joy. Praise to God who is present to us through Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise to God, God who is present to us through Jesus one Christ. another. Let us pray. Precious and holy God, you are our creator who has given us this abundant grace that we live our life in. You are with us always. And Lord, we ask now that your Holy Spirit be with us, that you pour out a fresh on us, and you open our hearts to all of those things that you would say to us today. Lord, give us guidance. Give us strength for the journey ahead. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Good morning, Chapel Hill. My name is Kara Coffey, and I'd like to take a moment to introduce um, some of our amazing volunteers that make um, each service possible. Up here with the band, we have Mallory, uh, Luis, and Carrie uh, helping make music this morning. In the back is Pat, Brian, uh, Alex, and Randine. So grateful for them. Amy will do a fantastic children's message uh, in just a little bit. And uh, Debbie, making sure that communion is ready and that our sanctuary is beautiful as always. So um, thank you very much to all of those people. Um, if you would, let's go ahead and stand and begin our worship, uh, music portion of our worship with Jesus. There is a truth older than the ages. There is a promise of things yet to come. There is one born for our salvation, Jesus. There is a light that overwhelms the darkness. There is a kingdom that forever reigns. There is freedom from the chains that bind us.
There is no one like you. Amen. You may be seated. How about this band, you all, huh? We're blessed. We're very, very blessed. So when all of us pray together, we lift our prayers to God, and we can be sure that God hears us and that God answers. So today, as we go to this God of ours in prayer, bring everyone, bring your hopes, bring those things that you're concerned for, bring the people that are ill that you know, bring everything. And let's have our prayers go to this God now, so he can hear us and he can answer. Let us pray. Precious and holy God, we are so grateful for lives that are well lived. When we think about our world and the people that are in it, that live among us, Lord, it's such a blessing and such a wonderful thing to have people who choose that pathway, that choose it early in their lives, that become those people that we look to to see what Jesus would do. Today, Lord, we ask for blessings on these 90th birthdays, Lord, for Charlie and for Janet. We give you thanks, Lord, for their life and for the power of their life, for the power of good that has existed and gone from them, from their husbands to their children, to their grandchildren that exist because when they heard that the path was there, they chose to follow. And we are so grateful today. We are so grateful. Loving God, remind all of us today that we are here because you invite us here. We are here because you have given us a pathway to follow. You seek us, you come to us, you embrace us, you send your grace. But we have to choose, Lord, whether we will go there or whether we won't. And so, Lord, today, we just give you thanks that you're always in the gracious God business and that those choices are ever before us. And I pray for our hearts today that our people choose you. They choose life. They choose sharing. And they choose goodness. And that this church can be a holy church, Lord. That this church is the church in the neighborhood where children learn how to follow you. Where children learn how to love. Where adults who were always concerned that maybe they just didn't fit. Maybe they just didn't hear right. Maybe for some reason they were overlooked, that they find you here. They find you here with us. You are a gracious, great, wonderful God. And boy, we surely, surely do love you. So today, oh God, we lift up our military men and women scattered all over the world. There are lots of people, God, who every day get up and are not really in so much control of their life because they choose to defend us as a people. And Lord, we are grateful for them. We are grateful for your care for them, your protection, your care for their children and their families. Oh Lord, we ask you to be with all of our sick, with people. We've got a lot of people that have been in the hospital. We've got still got people that have COVID and all kinds of stuff, and you know who they are, God. We silently lift those people to you in our hearts today. And we thank you for your healing. And Lord, we thank you for all of our neighbors that we don't know yet, but we're going to know. We thank you, oh God, that you're preparing their hearts now to come with us, to be with us. And Lord, you're preparing our hearts to be wonderful, good Christian people that welcome. And God, 
I thank you this morning for two people in particular, two, a family and another person in particular. I thank you for the family that came this morning for food that needed help. I thank you, God, that you are with them, that you are caring for them, and that as the church, we behaved in a way that Jesus is proud of us. And I thank you for the man I met yesterday and prayed for who is going to have to have some work done on his heart. In all our prayers, God, we lift him up to you and we ask you for his healing, for his life, and for his goodness. And Lord, bless this church. Continue to bless this church. We ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And now, the peace of God be with you all. And also, also with you. you. So for all of our people that are watching from home, let's turn around and wave gracious greetings to where Randine is. See her? And let's wave gracious greetings to one another. And if you would uh, go ahead and join us by standing as we sing our next song, Let the Heavens Open. You are welcome in this place, welcome in our hearts, come and have your way. God, meet us face to face, all consuming fire, move without restraint.
needed. Morning, everybody. I'd like to invite the children to come forward. Marcelo, I know you're back there. And Shaila, it's so good to see you. All right. Oh, what is that? That's a good question. Okay, let's have a quick seat. You can sit on the floor, on the pew, wherever. Okay. So, as Marcelo noticed, we've got something set up here. So, what does this look like to you guys? What do you think that looks like? I see you counting. <laughs> do you know what they are, Shyla? There's 31 rocks. Okay, so they're rocks. What do they make? Do they make maybe a pathway? Yeah, yeah. so what's a pathway? Yes, Marcelo? <gasps> treasure maps, ooh, I like that. So yes, they can be on a treasure map, right? If you follow the path to X marks the spot, you might find some goodies, right? So a pathway is a track laid down for walking, or if um, someone walks in the same spot a lot, or maybe like a horse would gallop through a certain pathway, it might leave a mark on the land. So, it can also be the course or direction that a person is moving. So, what are some places that you might see a pathway? Where might you see a pathway? I know you said treasure map, which I love that. That's so good. Um, what about a sidewalk? A sidewalk can be a pathway, right? We stay on there so we're, we stay safe from the cars on the road, right? Or if we go hiking. If we go hiking through the trees, there might be a special pathway. So, or a cave, yes, definitely. A zoo, yeah, you follow the path to see all the cool animals in the zoo. I love the zoo. Um, so, do you guys know what the pathway to life that is laid down by God looks like? That's a tough one. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that, have you? I don't think so either. So maybe if we try following this path here, you did, yes. So we're going to try to follow it, okay? And let's see if it helps us know what the pathway to God looks like, okay? So let's start. Ready? We're going to start right here where Marcelo is. So ready, guys? I know it's a short path, but we're going to follow it anyways. Okay. Delilah, you coming too? Okay, so we're gonna follow it, follow it, follow it. Uh-oh, which way are we supposed to go? That way. that way, are you sure? Here, let's flip over the rocks. So can you flip over this one, Shiloh? Oh, let Shiloh do this one, and you can do this one, Marcelo. Can you flip this one, Marcelo? Thank you, so what do they say? Okay, blame, blame. some. Right, blame someone else for something you did. What does that one say? Hi. Hi, Shyla. I always tell the truth. Always tell the truth. Okay, so which path are we gonna take? Are we always gonna tell the truth or blame someone else for something you did? Yes, good job. So, we're gonna pretend. I know we didn't pick this way. But we're gonna follow this. <gasps> it led to a cup. What's inside? Uh-oh, nothing. Okay, so always tell the truth. So now we're gonna keep following. Oh, we came to another one. Marcelo, you flip one, and Shiloh, you flip one. Ready? Do you know what this one says? Nor honor. Honor your father and mother. Good job. Honor your father and mother. Shyla, you got the long one. <laughs> In your has your parents when they ask you to do something. Yes, great job. So, are we going to honor your father and mother? or ignore your parents when they task you to do something. Honor your mother and father, good job. So, say we followed the one that y'all didn't pick. What's in the cup? 
<gasps> Nothing. All right. <laughs> we got one more. Ready? We're going to follow, follow, follow. All right. So Marcelo and Shyla, can you do this one, Shyla? Oh, Delilah's going to pick up the rocks. This one right here, Shyla. Okay. So can you read this one, Marcelo? Um, say hurtful things to owner people. Yeah, say hurtful things to other people. Uh-oh. Yep, your turn, Shyla. Love and you, neighbor is yours. Good job. So love your neighbor as yourself or say hurtful things to other people. So this means you want to treat everybody like you want to be treated. And this one means that you're kind of mean to other people. Which one? Yes. So say we followed the one that we didn't pick. Uh-oh. Nothing. So what's in that one? You can open it up. Whoa! Look at it! Candy, bracelets, oh my goodness! Look at all that! So, when we followed the path and took a certain route, it led us to something special and great, right? But other routes led to nothing. So when we follow God's commandments and laws, we're following the pathway to life. We're acting in a way that pleases him and shows everyone around us that God is with us. So our path here led to some pretty awesome stuff, right? But the actual pathway to life that God has laid out for us will lead us to the most amazing thing ever, and that's eternal life with God, right? So as long as we're always following his commandments and doing the right thing, we're going to have the best gift of all. Thank you for splitting that up, Marcelo. That was very sweet. All right, real quick, can y'all repeat after me and say a quick prayer? Ready? Okay. We thank you, God, for every prayer we have prayed, every song we have sung, all the things we have learned, all the laughter and fun. Thank you for the joy you bring and our wonderful times together. May we walk with you as each day begins, this moment and forever. Amen. Thank you guys for your help. Y'all were great. Please join me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. As the scriptures are read, you are invited to stand, sit, or kneel, whichever position creates an attitude of reverence and focus. Hear now these words from Psalm chapter 16, verses 5 through 11, and Galatians chapter 5, verses 13 through 18. You, Lord, are my portion, my cup, my control, my destiny. The property lines have fallen beautifully for me. Yes, I have a lovely home. I will bless the Lord who advises me. Even at night, I am instructed in the depths of my mind. I always put the Lord in front of me. I will not stumble because he is on my right side. That's why my heart celebrates and my mood is joyous. Yes, my whole body will rest in safety because you won't abandon my life to the grave. You won't let your faithful follower see the pit. You teach me the way of life. In your presence is total celebration. Beautiful things are always in your right hand. You were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only don't let this freedom be an opportunity to indulge your selfish impulses. 
but serve each other through love. All the law has been fulfilled in a single statement, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour each other, be careful you don't get eaten up by each other. I say be guided by the Spirit, and you won't carry out your selfish desires. A person's selfish desires are set against the Spirit, and the Spirit is set against one's selfish desires. They are opposed to each other, so you shouldn't do whatever you want to do. But if you're being led by the Spirit, you aren't under the law. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our next song, um, It Is Well With My Soul. And um, as we sing, prepare your hearts for the message that Pastor Becky will bring today.
as well. And before I uh, get started with prayer and our message here, I want to shout out two of our clergy that have served this church. Over here we have Pastor Kent, you guys went away, and Sheila. And then over here we have Chaplain Posey, and today he is with his family. You all want to greet them? It's just an honor to have our clergy back in, the, in our uh, worship place with us, right? Let's go to this God of ours in prayer. Holy and righteous God, you are with us. You are with us. You're the pathway. You're the life. You are all that we seek. Once we find you, the doors open and all of our life opens in front of us. And so God, today, may the words of my lips, may all of our hearts be acceptable to you. You're our rock and you're our redeemer. And we surely, surely do love you. In Jesus' precious name, we ask it all. Amen. So I've said a couple of times about the retreat that we went to. There's several people that are here that were at our retreat. Most of us drove out to this really beautiful place and kind of out by Lakey, sort of. It's a long ways away from here, but it's absolutely a beautiful drive. Bruce and I left just a little bit later than what we intended to leave. And so by the time that we got to the camp, it was really dark, okay? We actually went to the wrong gate a couple of times, put in the numbers, and probably lucky that, you know, somebody didn't think we were trying to break into their home. You know, we, we kind of look like those people, right? No, I'm teasing. But <laughs> we were following directions on our phone map which in case you guys believe everything you read on your phone, forget it, it's just not so. And when we finally arrived at this camp, we went through the gate and immediately started to descend, kind of on this kind of crooky path. It was really dark, kind of crooky, kind of windy, and then would sort of ascend a little bit, and then would sort of descend a little bit. You know, it's a... Uh, kind of a cool little pathway that we're making. We're moving up and down in this darkness until we drove right up on a stream. And the stream had this sign on it that said, stay between the markers, all right? <laughs> so I was looking at that and Bruce was looking at that and he looked over at me and he said, are we really going to drive in this water? He said, yeah, we are. We are. We are. And he says, do we really have to drive in this water? And I said, yeah, we, we really have to. And you know, it's funny when you're out in the dark and you're someplace you're not familiar with. It's like you're looking, it's pitch black. And all of a sudden, you start thinking, wow, I wonder if it rained today, huh? I wonder if it's kind of deep here. Uh, you know, I wonder, like, what this is really going to be like. And then you immediately think, huh, I wonder if it's muddy. <laughs> here we are with his pickup loaded completely up, you know. <laughs> so even though, you know, I had already heard about all this, we're just kind of sitting there sort of figuring it out. And... Interestingly enough, it was pretty quiet until we just took off and drove through the stream, right? And the second you just start driving through it, you actually do what Brian and Karen tell you to do, that that's the only way you're going to get there and it's going to be just fine. <laughs> you find out that what you're on is bedrock, real firm bedrock. And it's very, very safe. No money, no money bottoms. And driving through this stream was, <laughs> we're just like driving along, you know, looking at everything, feeling all these rocks underneath. And about a quarter of a mile later, we pulled up on this shore. And really, even though it was dark, I think 
I, I probably said this to Bruce way too many times. I think this is the most beautiful place in the world. I've been saying that now for two years while we haven't been able to get there, you know, that someday we're going to get back there. And it was. It was beautiful. So after we got there and all of the, you know, kind of unknowing parts really are over with all of this, I was saying my prayers and kind of thanking God for getting us there safely and all of our people for getting there safely and all of the wonderful things that were going to happen while we were there. And I realized that this journey that we were making through this darkness was an awful lot like our journey that we make through life, right? The Bible tells us, whether we believe this or not, that we're always surrounded by darkness, that we are. We love Christ, but there's a lot of darkness in our world today. But no matter what, Jesus is the pathway. He's the pathway. He is the solid bedrock that we walk on that keeps us safe. And faith in him is always going to remove our fear. Amen? Amen? It's going to take away our doubts. And he is going to lead us down the pathway of life. And there is nothing to fear. Absolutely nothing to fear as long as we know Christ. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 There is absolutely nothing to fear as long as we have our faith in our Savior. You know, the early Christians were all known as the followers of the way, okay? Having read an awful lot of history about all that, the, the word is hodos, the way, and it means the path or the pathway. But certainly, you know, in our day and time, when we think about the pathway, what we really think about is this way of life that we live as people in faith, right? We have a way of life that God has asked us to live. When we commit to Christ, we have to follow the path. You know, there's a lot of talk in our world all the time about how free we are and we get to do just whatever we want to because we're free people. But in reality, Christians follow Christ through a world of darkness that abounds with mess from the enemy of our soul. And we have to stay on the path to be faithful. We have to. We absolutely have to. It matters. It matters. Everything that we do matters. Today I want to shout out Shirley and Karen and uh, Janet Shaper because on this 90th birthday, it is so amazing to see people who follow the pathway through their whole life. You know, the light of Jesus just shines so brightly on you and on Janet and shows so brightly out of you when you talk, when you move, with the choices that you make. You know, I was with Janet and her family a couple of weeks ago at the Baptist Church where Terry was memorialized. And Janet was just an amazing rock because she knew where her son was. As much as of things in life that can go wrong, people who are led by the Spirit of God are the people that we follow in this life. You know, I am convinced that when, as we live in this world, that the absolute greatest need that we have, if we want to wake up and, and be good Christian people every day, is we have to grow up. We have to grow up in presence and power of Jesus. Amen? Amen? We have to grow up spiritually. And that means that every day we have to ask Jesus for the holy courage that comes from having faith in a deep love for Christ. We need for Christ's courage to just be poured into us every day. We need strong faith.
to be able to trust Jesus every day. And we need it always. We need it every day of our life, not just every now and then, not just when there's a loss or something terrible that goes wrong in our life, or not just when we're struggling and we're having a hard time getting to where we're trying to be. Every day of our life, we need the courage of Christ to be able to live in faith and to follow the pathway, you know? I think about a lot of the ways that we encourage each other because we all love attaboys, right? We all love, we got this, things, and those sorts of things like that. But in reality, what I'm talking about today is encouragement that's a whole lot more kind of serious really than that. Every one of us needs encouragement to remind us of who we are every day. Every one of us needs encouragement that cuts to the core of our faithfulness, of our faith, and reminds us that these strong hands of Christ hold us together. Even after we have been saved from all the wiles of the devil, as Paul would say, we still need the encouragement of the church and we need the encouragement of the Holy Spirit to keep ourselves on the pathway of life. Yesterday, Roger and Helen and I and Lonnie, I think, were here with these crowds of people that were here with our rummage sale. And I was wandering around the lot with my Pastor Becky pin on, you know. And this man walked up to me, and he began to talk to me. And the first thing he said was, do you preach kingdom of Jesus or do you preach Paul? And I just sat there for a minute and thought, uh, yeah, all, probably, you know. But what I ended up saying was, we are all saved through the blood of Christ. Christ, we all live in Jesus' kingdom. And yes, we love Paul's preaching that reminds us of how to be the gracious church. And, you know, I tried to hit all the boxes with all that, right? But anyway, it turns out that he is a Paul guy. And what he said was, he had been a Christian all of his life, but he had to worship in a place where people told Paul's gospel because it was encouraging to him. It was encouraging to hear about grace, and it was encouraging to him to hear about the power of God. It turned out that he had a heart condition. He needed a doctor and he didn't have one. He had left his clinic. He needed prayer. And I stood there talking to him for a while and I was kind of trying to, I was listening to what God was saying. I was listening to him. And finally, I just reached over and put my hands on him and began to pray for him to heal and prayed for God to love him and to give him the assurance that God was with him no matter what and tears began to run down his face and so I shook his hands and then I felt like the Spirit of God asked me to tell him who, about the most amazing heart surgeon I know that he fixed two of my very beloved disciples valves in their heart right and I did that and reminded him of just how much God loved him Look, we all have to have encouragement. We need it every single day to pour courage into us because it's a choice that we make every single day if we are going to live faithfully. It's a choice that we make every single day. And we have to be reminded every day that God never leaves us and that God never forsakes us, that God heals us and holds us and is there always with us and that God is always our hope when we absolutely cannot find it we can be absolutely certain that God is right here offering it to us a lot of years ago 
I found this really great place to run. I'll never get over it. It's just, it was just fabulous. It was behind this old school and it was an old track field that was circled by what had been a different kind of a field of some kind, I don't know. But it was just a training spot. It was huge, wide tracks that you could tell the lanes had been marked. And the thing I loved about it was that it was like a no judgment zone kind of thing. You know, it, there were lots of different kinds of people that were there every day. When I ran there, you know, some days I would get there and there'd be an awful lot of people that were walking together, chatting, that were walking about one mile per hour, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I would wave as I ran by them and they were sweet. Oh, honey, come here, what's your name? You know, this kind of thing. I just loved it. Nobody judged anybody on that pathway. It didn't matter if you were young, if you were older, if you were a great runner, if you were barely able to walk, you were welcome. And you were treated wonderfully while you were there. Well, around this field was this huge mess of weeds and couple burrs and grasshopper. It was, it was terrible. I don't know how to really tell you without just kind of making y'all sick, really. It was awful, okay? It was unbearable to look at and it was unbearable to cross. You could walk across it. There wasn't any kind of a sign up that says no trespassing here or anything like that. It was huge. Lots of people could go together that way. But if you chose to do that, chances are you would have got to the other side of it with Lots of chigger bites, maybe a snake bite, might step in a hole and break your foot. Something really could happen. But you were free to choose that if that's what you really, really wanted to choose. When we walk with Christ, we are choosing the right path. And everybody is welcome. Everybody is welcome. Every age, every person, men, women, everyone is welcome to be there. Jesus and the saints have blazed that trail in front of us. There are many people who lead and guide us that way. And Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, still tends that pathway for us. Jesus defines our pathway to life. You are free today to choose if you will follow. You're free to choose that. And I hope that you will. Today as we move into Holy Communion, I hope that we'll spend just a little bit of reflection time on your pathway on what your personal pathway of faith looks like and how God works in your life. Choose wisely. Amen? Let us pray. A oh, holy God, you've laid before us a lot of path, a pathway that's wonderful and that's amazing. And you yourself designed it, you built it, you yourself keep it up, and you yourself go with us when we choose it. So Lord, Holy Spirit, continue to be with us, to speak into our ears today, as people make choices and as people see their lives, oh Lord, help them to see you in their lives. Help them to love you and to follow. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.
to live in community, to care for one another, to use wonderful gifts, to to sustain community, we follow our own desires. Instead of trusting in their care, we think we can do it alone. Give us obedient spirits that we may care for one another, depend on our love, and use our gifts for your gospel. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven.
has quaked before Moved by the sound of his voice And seas that are shaken and stirred Can be calmed and broken from my regard
is well with me.
Zimba, Thursday's 5.30. Yeah, okay. Free! <laughs> Thursday, the community engagement team will meet at 6.30 at Luis and Mallory Melchor's home. And United Methodist Men will meet Saturday. Uh, Paul Collins' birthday next week will be celebrated at Red Lobster on as soon as church is over, I guess, or at 2.30, it looks like. Um... And our United Women in Faith are asking for donations of Halloween candy for Trunk or Treat. All right? Okay, so I just have one more thing that I want to do. And I want to wish... <laughs> I want to wish Shirley...